Yes guys, welcome from me, Challenge Manager 0102, yet another video. Now I've got to be honest with you, right, I hadn't planned to do any more videos today, but um, I've got time on my hands, clearly. Um, so um, somebody requested a couple of player profiles, um, and there you see the first one. The great, the great, the legend, Paul Gascoigne. Now, let's just go straight on to this. Um, Paul Gascoigne, now this, this, this is a touchy subject because um, obviously not everybody will share my views. That, that That's <laughs> that's definitely, not everybody will share my views at all on Paul Gascoigne. Um, some people idolise him, some people hate him and so on and so on. But uh, we'll start with the CM perspective. Now, because he's one of those ageing players, he's not someone I've got a lot of experience with in terms of playing in the game. Um, I think a lot. I, I read a lot about people looking for his regen because he retires pretty um, pretty swiftly. Um, he hasn't got any clauses, and um, but he is on a one-year deal at Everton as he starts. So re just remember, you're looking for balance, bravery, and flair to try and locate his regen. And, and if his regen comes in with uh, similar sort of attributes like what he's got here, determination, uh, loyalty, big matches, corners, it, it's great. I mean, his injury prone is 20. Uh, that's obviously a real big downer. Um, but I can't really tell you much about how, how he flares up in the game. So if you've got some experience of how Gascoigne flares up in the game or how his regen uh, flares up, you know, share it with us. Now, in terms of uh, Gascoigne as a player, where do we fucking start with that? I mean, Gascoigne was it was a great player you know the, the short and long of it is he was very he was very good player he was unfortunate in respect of injuries you know that that's a fact and in all honesty he was one of the first players that really made that big move weren't he um out of the country when he got his big move to Lazio um then of course he suffered another injury over at Lazio as well as the injury he had at Spurs um so I, I feel for any players that, that, that suffer successive injuries almost. Um, but of course, he started out his career as uh, at Newcastle. And I always remember, and I know you're going to know what I'm going to refer to here, the, the famous picture of uh, Vinnie Jones uh, almost grabbing his bollocks. Um, or, or words to that effect. Something, something like that. I know there was an old black and white picture knocking about of them, um, you know, clashing, stuff like that. Uh, when he went to, uh, after Lazio, he went to Rangers. Now, after Rangers... Uh, whilst he was at Rangers, in my opinion, he was at his best. I mean, people say Italy 90. Um, I don't agree with that personally. I think he was young. How many young and vibrant players do we have for England who never actually end up succeeding? Uh, Chamberlain. Let's take Chamberlain. Walcott. I always thought they were prosperous. You know, Gascoigne um, was prosperous, but then, you know, injuries really sort of deterred him which is clearly not his own not his fault but Rangers he you know he's performing well for Rangers now whilst I'm not a massive fan of Scottish football he did do well at Rangers and of course there's obviously one memorable goal for uh, from Paul Gascoigne and I've got a little story on this right so it was Euro 1996 you all know the goal I'm going to refer to here Gary McCarthy's just missed the penalty David Seaman saved it and England got a counter-attack and Gascoigne scores this fucking amazing goal now, 1996, I'd have been uh, 16 years old, right? And I was working at Sports and Soccer, what is now um, Sports Direct. And uh, obviously it was part-time. And I was on a break, and I went into cash converters, right? I was on a lunch break because the game was on, right? And do you remember the days, right, where you used to go into the TV shops to look at the scores and the teletext and shit? So the England game was on, right? And, I, and I'm standing there like a fucking spanner watching the England game. And I see this remarkable save from David Seaman. And then I see this remarkable goal from uh, uh, Paul Gascoigne. And I'm like, well, I don't fucking go back to work here. Fuck this. I went. I just went home. And that was my last ever shift, funnily enough. They, they didn't accept it that I was watching the game. So that was the last time I ever worked at sports and soccer. Um, now, when Middlesbrough came in for Gascoigne... I felt, because he'd obviously, in my opinion, had a good success at Rangers, did well for England, um, I thought this would be a really good move for Middlesbrough. In, in all honesty, I thought it was a, a worthwhile move. I think there was a lot of, it was 50-50. Some people were saying he's over the hill, he's a liability um, on the pitch. I didn't really agree with that concept, he was a liability on the pitch. Off the pitch, we'll get to that in a minute. Um, 
So, um, he, you know, he got his move to Middlesbrough, but of course the big news in 98 was when he was left out of the England squad by Glenn Oddle. So, you know, uh, obviously ended up at Everton, uh, Burnley, and I wrote down here, Gansu Tianma. I'm just, let me just, no, I don't even know who the fuck they are. Whoever they are, he played four games with them in 2003. And I do remember his final club was Boston United. Boston's not far from where I live. Um, and he only had four games there. But in total, uh, 12 games short of 400 games for uh, overall professional domestic football. Included 80-odd goals. And for England, 50... Uh, well, you can see England, actually, because he certainly didn't... Um, England's right there. I wrote it down. I don't know why I bother writing this shit down when I know it's right there. 57 games, 10 goals. Uh, he also had a um, dozen or so games for the under-21s. Now... Uh, managerial he's only been in charge of again another local team to me almost was Kettering Town uh, I don't even know how that how that ended up uh, but that was like 2005 so that was he went to Kettering after he finished at Boston so uh, that's that but that's all he's ever done now in terms of off the field He's a liability. He's a fucking liability. Now, I know that this might be a little bit of a controversial statement. I think he's... Um, how can I put this without being a cunt? He's a fucking disgrace. Uh, there was that thing... Um, uh, what is it? Somebody went to kiss him on a train and he, he grabbed her tits or something like that. You know, uh, you know, he was a, it was a waste of talent in that sense. The, 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 the booze, you know... I know you could say, oh, but uh, he's a professional. I don't give a shit. For me, there's no excuse. I'm sick of him going in and out of fucking um, rehabilitation for alcoholism. Then, of course, a few years ago, when Gary Lineker and a few other people all clubbed together to pay money to him to get the help he needed, bollocks. I don't agree with that. You know, Gascoigne had a career, a career that everybody would fucking love to have. And um, there's people out there that do need to go to the Alcoholics Anonymous and, and, and go to therapy and this sort of shit who haven't got, who haven't had the resources that he's had to him. So it's a, it's a bit of a touchy subject, really, because I know some people are like, no, fuck you, G Gaz is great. G I'm not denying Gaz was a good footballer and he was unlucky with injuries, but in terms of away from football, he was far from a model professional. He was an absolute wanker. And it, in my opinion, a disgrace. I'm a big fan of Alan Shearer, and people say, and I remember people were saying Alan Shearer was boring, but, and I think, fuck you, right? Just because Shearer wasn't a bad boy, uh, I think we're going to Geordie connections here, but just because Shearer wasn't a bad boy like Gascoigne, and he wasn't getting pissed, and he wasn't doing this. I mean, Gascoigne, I always used to read, he was out on the piss with um, his mate, uh, fuck, Jimmy, J uh, J Jimmy, Jimmy Five Bellies, wasn't it? Big fat fuck, or something like that, I don't know. But, you know, I just think. I just think, you know, fuck off, right? And if you watch the film Mean Machine, it's a, it's a similar sort of concept, you know, with Vinnie Jones going into prison and people having a go at him saying that he had the career that everybody wanted and he threw it away um, because of his off-the-field antics. Gascoigne is the same. Now, yes, all right, when I see Gascoigne, picture of him, and yes, he looks frail, he looks this, he looks that, but let's be fair here, let's be fucking fair, he's got himself to blame, and he has uh, dodged death so many times... Through through neglect him through neglecting himself, and then you get people that fucking get killed. Yeah, like um, people that get killed, innocent people. So I'm very fucking bitter with that. It's a touchy subject, uh, and no doubt there's a few of that are gonna are gonna like, fuck you. I'm disliking this cunt because I don't like his views on Gascoigne. And you know what? So, so be it. But that you know that that's um, and I get you know. There was a lot of um, legal troubles. I know he, he knocked his um, knocked his wife about a little bit. I don't know how much of that is true. Was it Cheryl? Uh, and there was a lot of mental illness. But this falls back to what I'm saying, yeah. Mental illness, particularly mental health. Um, you know, people have it now and they don't have... Uh, they Or they don't certainly don't have the sort of uh, resources that he would have had at the time. So um, when I think back to the time when Middlesbrough were going to pay out a lot of money to Rangers and people were saying, no, no, that, he, he, he's a waste. And I used to think, no, I used to defend him. But they were fucking right, as much as it, as much as it pains me to say. Um, then, of course, there was, uh, there was something with a mirror, weren't there? Some sort of um, phone hacking with a mirror, or was it the news of the world, or, or someone like that? I don't know. But you see, I, I've got a lot of... Um, hatred towards Gascoigne because I just think you know he's a disgrace I mean there's a lot of players in football past and present I fucking hate 
because uh, like Mason Greenwood, let, let's take him for example, little cunt, you know, uh, Mendy, the people that are currently in the news, um, Giggs, I'm not sure about Giggs if I'm truly honest with you, um, I don't know, it, it, it's a tricky one, but I am intrigued to know people's views on Gascoigne, um, but you know, that, that goal um, for England, and especially against Scotland, of course he was playing for Rangers at the time, and I suppose it brings the best out of you, so um, it, you know, it, it was a, a bizarre time, but for me, I mean, I'm, I wrote down right how many games he had for uh, Newcastle and Tottenham, and in fact that's probably on here, isn't it? I wrote down, I don't know if it's going to be, it should, they should tally up, uh, 92, I wrote, 92, 76, yeah, 92 for both of them, isn't that fucking ironic, 92 goal uh, games for both Newcastle and Tottenham, uh, and he almost scored uh, the same amount of goals, but it was, uh, I worked out, uh, I wrote down, 19 for Spurs, 21 for Newcastle, 14, 21 for Newcastle, yep. Yeah. And 19 for Spurs, that's right, yeah. So, so they got that right. Um, and of course you can see, I'm mean, assuming this is correct here on the, uh, the history, R Rangers 28, 14 and 28. And bear in mind he's a midfielder, so that's some pretty good going. Uh, the, the following season, the season starting after the Euro 96, did really well. Uh, the following season was uh, pretty shit. Um, so you could say, I don't know, you had two great seasons and then they fucked them off, which I think is a little bit cuntish, personally. I genuinely think it's a little bit cuntish. So that's that. That's Paul Gascoigne. And I hope you enjoyed the video. Do share views with us, even if they are against mine, the negative. It's always good. Always good to share. Till next time, guys. Take it easy.